Hey, witches. It's your favorite witch and familiar. I'm the familiar. Derek is the witch. <laughs> I'm magical. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, hi. How are you? Agatha all along. We are here. The first official spinoff of an MCU show, right? Yeah. I would say this the, is and the first MCU show too. And it's none other none other than Agatha all along. That's amazing. That's very happy. I we were looking forward to this for a while. Um, so it's finally here. Spooky season, witch season, all of the Halloween feels are in full effect. The last day of summer is happening. <gasps> It's all happening, guys. So long, summer. But that's okay, because this they just timed this perfectly. It's going to run throughout October. As the leaves are falling, we will be on a magical adventure with Agatha. We're back in our WandaVision phase. This is going to be fun. All the way back to 2020. Oh, God. No, thank you. Um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so before we get into everything, typical housekeeping things, follow us on all the socials. We got a Patreon. We got a Discord. All of those wonderful things. Everything is in the show notes below. If you're watching this on YouTube, you know, subscribe. Give a comment below. If you're watching this on Spotify, hi, how are you? <laughs> Love you. Yeah, but going ahead. Spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. So Major if you have not, spoilers. If you have not seen WandaVision, if you've not seen the MCU, if you've not seen Agatha All Along, episodes one and two. If you haven't seen Heartstopper. I feel like we just need to put that in there, probably. Yeah. <laughs> that 70s show. If you've never seen anything ever. Right. Continue listening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Any sort of Danish crime drama or something. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so let us officially take a bite of Agatha All Along, Episode 1, Seekest Thou Road, directed by Jack Schaefer and written by Jack Schaefer, Jason Rostovsky, and Gianna Sarkis. And Episode 2, Circle Sown with Fate, Unlock Thy Hidden Gate, also directed by Jack Schaefer and written by Laura Donnie, Jack Schaefer, and Jason Rostovsky. Agnes O'Connor is a hard-boiled detective on the case of a Jane Doe who appeared barefoot in the forest of Westview. When Agent Rio Vidal tries to take over and a mysterious teen shows up, the veil is lifted and Agatha emerges from the curse placed on her by Wanda Maximoff. Teen convinces the newly freed Agatha to take a walk down the witch's road to gain her powers back. She convinces a coven to come together to sing a song that leads them to a frightening forest. Ooh, that was a mouthful in the beginning. Luckily, you don't have to do that until the penultimate episode and the finale. Yeah, the doubles, that's when it gets tough. Yeah. <laughs> but I made it through. So before we get into, like, I guess the technical aspect of it, of us getting nine episodes again, us getting a double feature book ending this, how did you feel about the premiere and second episode of Agatha All Along? I think they did a really great job of bridging over the themes of WandaVision into this series, especially starting it off as another homage to a type of television show, right? It really kind of brought us back into that world, back into Westview, and to really figure out what's been going on with Agatha. And so that, you know, as the introduction as the first episode was fantastic. Um, and I think the second episode really set up the rest of the series. So this acting as a bridge for both WandaVision into the full season of Agatha all along, two thumbs up for sure. Yeah, that's pretty much how I feel. I, I really enjoyed the first season because it felt familiar, even though it wasn't sitcom -y, right? I do feel like maybe that's because Wanda's gone, the Darkhold is missing, um, and she was able to cross over from the sitcoms into like HBO land. Um, it was fun because we got to get back into that and then the second episode really was just like, this is what the show is going to be about, or at least this story arc. Um, I liked the sep second episode more than the first, mm. but I liked both of them mm -hmm. just as much. Um, I think Catherine Hahn is the perfect actor and Agatha Harkness is one of the perfect characters to have a spinoff and to carry it. Um, this cast is just amazing. I think I've loved every single person in this. Mm. So it just makes me more excited. Also, witches. Yeah. Like... You can tell that everybody that worked on this likes witchy things. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? And I also like, beside, I would say, you know, our neighbors in Westview, I loved looking at this cast of five women, a queer teenager and a bunny. Like yeah. that is, and, and then, you know, that's just like perfect for me. Well, it's also 
it, it's in that aspect, it's kind of awesome that you have this cast of women that are running it, right? And it's women of all ages and colors and sizes and shapes. So it's just really cool to see. Yeah. Um, it's not something that you would expect from a superhero studio. I'm glad we have it. Absolutely. I'm super glad we have it. And, you know, seeing some reactions of people who are like, it's a training ground for queer kids or something uh, like that. Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, there is something, you know, they were saying it, all the press tour and everything leading up to this was like, this is like the queerest MCU thing. This is like, you know, uh, witchy and all of this. And it feels that way. Right. And I think in the best possible sense, again, it's only been two episodes. Granted, they were around 46 ish minutes. Um, but I feel that because there's moments in this show where you're just like, I don't know if that was queer coded or not, but like kind of hot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's that one conversation between uh, Catherine Hahn and Aubrey Plaza. It got hot. Oh, yeah. It got real steamy. Oh, yeah. Spe okay. Before we get into like specifics, <laughs> I have to know between these two episodes, do you have a favorite scene in these two episodes? My favorite scene is the kitchen fight. Oh, with Rio and uh, Agatha? Yes. Yeah. Because it was just so badass. <laughs> I mean, the stunt work was fantastic. The choreography was great. And it really did have that push and pull of, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, villain slash lovers. Mm -hmm. You know, it felt like there was tension there, not only as we were once adversaries, but maybe there was something deeper going on. Um, and just seeing the strength of Agatha, you know, that's one thing that I just want to say is this is really exciting to see who Agatha actually is, right? Because in WandaVision, Agatha was playing a role the entire time, right? She was the nosy neighbor and she knew what she was doing. Whereas here, you know, after our crime drama, we're actually getting to see Catherine Hahn's version of Agatha. Well, we're getting to see Agatha, I think, without the... Uh, I guess, focus or drive to steal the Scarlet Witch's power. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, now we're getting like backstory. Who is Rio to Agatha? What did she do with children's? Because multiple times there was child sacrifice brought up. So it's like, what is happening yeah. with Agatha? Who is she? I, I mean, from what we know, right? She was willing to kill her mother to get <laughs> well, supreme power. So, you know, apparently we learned in WandaVision she bit a child once. And we learned in this, she ate a baby. Yeah, and sacrificed it's, a child. <laughs> so, you know, she's she's an interesting character. W what was your favorite part? Yeah. Uh, oh, God. It's really hard. I honestly think, so it's in the first episode, um, her going through all of her outfits and clawing her way out of Wanda's hex, essentially, um, or her curse or a spell, whatever you want to call it. Um, I just thought it was so cool. And it was that bridge, that transition from WandaVision into the show of Agatha mm -hmm. Harkness. Um, I just liked it. And it was cool to relive some of those costumes again. And just that final scene of her in black and white, but everything else in color. It's like, oh, yeah, I love that. Like, I just love that. It's so cool. It's so unique. Um, and then we finally get yeah. Agatha. And yeah. I loved in the last, like her original costume from WandaVision in the black and white, she kind of took a moment, right? Yeah, she's still like, in it right she's in this like weird hazy period even when she was like coming out of it yeah and it, but she was just like oh and it felt like like for us it was like this is how i was first introduced to you and now this is who i really am right i did have one question about that scene when in wandavision was she wearing a juicy couture tracksuit that said naughty on her butt it was oh man i think it might have been like the modern family era one. Oh, i i remember it briefly it it almost felt to me like an easter egg of some sort like maybe we missed something or there was a scene that was cut out because no. i didn't remember that one i remember i remember mostly the top half because i don't think they showed her butt mm. mostly um until they actually showed her butt <laughs> in this uh series but yeah I, I do remember it not like super well but i remember it in wandavision we just rewatched it too i know maybe we just i love a i mean Come on, I grew up. I grew up in the two early two thousands. Those things were like I thought you were gonna everywhere. Say, I thought you were gonna say I love a butt. I was gonna say I love a rhinestone butt. I was gonna say it, but then I decided to reframe because I'm like, do I really love a rhinestone butt? I yeah. don't know. Um, okay, so before we get into like the questions, right? Because that is the best way that I think it to like review this, to talk about this, to go through a mystery type show. Before we do that, 
the first episode itself is very much WandaVision, right? It is Mayor of Easttown. It is True Detective. Mm-hmm. It's that kind of era, that HBO era crime drama. Um, how did you feel about that depiction of it? Because we're, we were so used to sitcoms, right? Mm. And then to jump into crime dramas and then to find out that like she was literally just in her block radius the entire time. Like she had a fake car. The car. That was a little sad. That was a that was a little sad. When she hopped in that car, I was like, oh no. <laughs> the fact of like, you know, if you think about think of it too much, it's just like how like at what point in her mind was she like building a car? You know what I mean? <laughs> She's just like, yeah. gotta go. And she just like goes to Herb's house to talk to Herb. He goes to Dottie's house yeah. to go to the library. Yeah. Um, but what did you think about that whole situation? I thought it was really inventive. I, I, I think that to think of Agatha stuck in these different dramas. For three years. For three years, where probably I feel like it, in every single episode, she's trying to figure out who Wanda is, mm. right? It's the mystery of why she is where she is. And, and she can't ever figure it out. Are you talking about WandaVision? I mean, in this, right? So oh, okay. for those three years, in my mind, oh. she's constantly just in a different episode of like, like she's like, she's on a SVU, you know, she's in, right. you know, Chicago fire, but every time she's just trying to figure out who Wanda is. And so she's just kind of trapped. Mm-hmm. And so I, to see how she's been existing for three years, I think it made a lot of sense. Oh, like when you see her house for what it really is, like a, a crazy person's house, mm-hmm. right? It's just uh, things everywhere. And like, Maybe stuff that the neighbors gave her to appease whatever she was asking for. Because the thought of her going to Dottie's house and uh, the library, which it's not, it's just her house. And like asking, like just going in there and being like, I need this to be looked up. And the whole townspeople just appeasing her. They're like, oh God, okay, here comes Agatha. What is she doing now? (laughs) Well, even that one part, right, where um, Jones, who is like the chief of chief detective, He's like, go home. Right. She's probably sitting in his house. He's like, go home. Yeah. I don't yeah. want you here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of my house. It's so wild to think about that. Um, so going on to, I, I, I think it, it was a great bridge, right? We've said that a few times, but I think that needed it for us to be like the familiar into what the show is going to be, mm. but also really excited because we're still going to get that WandaVision, WandaVision element with the Witch's Road. Because it does very much seem from the promos and everything that we got, each trial essentially is going to be some type of different witchy thing, mm. horror element. So that is really exciting. And, and I think the thing is, is that we have to be willing to lean into the spooky thing, mm. right? It's not going to be sitcom. It's going to be horror and mystery. And so, you know, these first two episodes did a really good job of getting us in that mood, in that flow, for sure. Right. So one of uh, one question that we had of was, is Wanda going to show up? She ish did. Yeah. <laughs> she kind of did. Um, they did really do a good job mirroring her seeing Wanda's body to mayor of Easttown because the mayor of Easttown, when uh, Kate Winslet goes and sees the body, it mm. is hidden just like it is with that. So it was a cool mirroring between mm. those two. Um, I'm curious because it seems very much like, in universe, even the witches that Agatha recruits to her coven all believe the Scarlet Witch is dead, like Wanda's dead. And I think that is true with them. They could change it later on. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah, she's dead. She's gone right now. The dark hole gone. But like, she could come back if she wanted to with the whole witch's road being here and everything like that. And I think one of the things that we tend to bring up a lot is that the multiverse is a thing now, Ugh, right? Not for long, though. Secret Wars is all going away. Well, then they better get Wanda back quick because... They got until 2026 <laughs> exactly. to get her back. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. But I do think I, one of the parts that I loved is right before Wanda actually goes through the different costume stages and she sees the library card toe tag. You mean Agatha? I'm sorry. Yes, Agatha. <laughs> she sees the library card toe tag. And, you know, the last two names on it are Agatha Harkness and Wanda Maximoff. But you get to see all, there's other dates of oh, who yeah. else had the Darkhold. 
And I thought that was a cool detail that there were all these other witches before them that had it. And who are those witches? Also, how long did Agatha have it? What did she do to get the dark hold? Because there is something that I think is a big mystery that we were theorizing throughout all of WandaVision with Senor Scratchy. Mm. And in this, we see that in a room that she has in her house, Nicholas Scratch, like a kid's room, Mm -hmm. still set up like a kid's room, but the name Nicholas Scratch, who in the comics is Agatha's son, right? who is the father of the Salem Seven. Mm -hmm. So it gets real confusing. (laughs) There's a a whole family affair here. Um, So the question becomes, is that room that we saw just almost like a manifestation of Agatha's memories or feelings or subconscious kind of manifesting itself because like she didn't set that up right was that part of Wanda's spell you know what I mean that like made that room for her in some type of way right like what happened to Nicholas Scratch right exactly I mean or is that just the room that the bunny lives in no you know? no I know um <laughs> but I did think that was an interesting detail and the fact that they stayed so long to really show us like the plaques and the bed and everything. It was there for a reason. One thing that I was wondering is, as far as we knew, Agatha was living in Ralph Boner's house. Well, that's where it's weird because Ralph Boner, I don't think necessarily lived there because Jimmy Wu was looking for Ralph Boner. Oh. Like he was trying to find him as a witness. He could have been living there, but also he was like an actor. So she just hired him and then held him captive? Well, I think he, like, she kidnapped him to Ah, use him. Ah, I see. Or something. I don't know. Like, I think that part's a little weird because Mm -hmm. we didn't get the deleted scenes and stuff like that. Right. But I guess, like, she was living in whatever house she was living in during WandaVision. Yeah. Because she's still, like, two houses down. Mm Mm-hmm. So. All right. Well, (laughs) mystery question mark still on on the house. Um, But I do, I mean, I was really happy to see Senior Scratchy back. But who, like... Who or what is Senior Scratchy? You know, is this just a familiar of Agatha's or is it a human trapped in this bunny form? You know, that I think is kind of a question mark as well. I do think it is interesting that he did come back. Mm -hmm. Like after the hex was, I mean, she came out of it, Senior Scratchy was there. So it's interesting. I have some theories when we get to the teen. um, So we'll, we'll talk about that. But speaking of new characters, and who are they? Rhea? Rhea. Rio, who is she? Who is the screen witch? Who is the screen witch? Who is Aubrey Plaza? They have some history, heated history. And we also got some, I guess, like how, I don't know, covens or between witches work or particularly those two because they can't kill each other. Mm -hmm. She says, you can't, we can't kill each other. What does that mean? Why? They've obviously known each other for so long. Are they ex-lovers? Are they just really close? And it was more of like a taunting cat and mouse type of thing. Is their son Nicholas Scratch? (laughs) You know, I don't know. I mean, one of the, or also maybe they were close at some point and Agatha stabbed her in the back. Mm -hmm. Right. So Rio came back. Which we know she could do. (laughs) Absolutely. So Rio came back to stab her in the front, Mm -hmm. literally like Mm -hmm. in her chest. But The thing that's interesting, though, is that why also does Rio, like, why did Rio want Agatha to no longer be trapped? Mm. Right? She went there to say, and she said to her, is this how you see yourself? It does seem like, so that, I do have a question about that. And maybe, listeners, you can help, or if you know. um, I definitely know. (laughs) So the teen and Rio kind of show up at the same time. The teen says... Like they had to learn the incantations and stuff to get her out. So it very much seems like the teen was able to get her out. And then Rio kind of came in. It seems like Rio was looking for her, but because of the Darkhold's magic and spell, she couldn't find her. So it seems like once that was lifted, then Rio was able to find her. So I guess what I'm thinking is once that was lifted, Rio was immediately able to just, it was like ping. Got her because yeah. she's like the, an earth witch. She can travel anywhere at any time. So if there's earth. Yeah. So kind of like she might have been looking for her during WandaVision and right. then finally was able to find her once that was kind that's, of done. That's what I think. Mm. And so she found her and then Agatha got out of it by saying like, I don't have any powers. Is this actually how you want to like defeat me powerless and stuff? Which is an interesting thing 
to see what their dynamic, right? Mm-hmm. And, and the fact that she goes along with it, but is like, well, I'm going to tell the witches that want to kill you. And she tells the Salem Seven, they're like, she's going to be here at sundown. So it's interesting. It's like, so she's an antagonist, obviously, but Agatha isn't so quick to get rid of her. Mm-hmm. So there is still that familiar bond there, but what is that and what did happen? Right. And one of the interesting things is that when Agatha is working on putting her coven together, mm. right? Lilia, who we'll talk about in a little bit, has one of her spells and writes down the coven members' names. And she puts a black heart, right? And right. obviously, Rio says earlier that mm, I have a black heart, right? So we know we're talking about her. But I just thought it was interesting that, uh, you know, if we remember in the first episode of WandaVision, there was the black heart on the calendar. Mm-hmm. So, I don't, so I just thought that was an interesting crossover that the Black Heart is still being represented in both of these series. I It's really smart. And I don't know if they... So this is where it's fun, right? With the show. And I think where Jack Schaefer and team shine. And it's smart to do this. They did those things, right? And it was the whole, I guess, comedy of the first episode of WandaVision was like, what does the heart mean? Is it an anniversary? Whatever. It was just the hearts coming over for dinner, right? So that's where it could have stopped. But I I think that they brought that back because they're like, we could use that. So I feel like a lot of the stuff that we're getting, like, you can't kill another witch, um, the heart stuff, it's stuff that they're taking that they already set up and going with it. So it's Mm -hmm. like stuff they're like writing in real time, but retroactively being like, this is how it works. Yeah, Like Agatha can't get the powers unless she's blasted with it. I don't think that was a rule to Mm -hmm. begin with, but they're like, Oh, yeah, she was only getting it when she was blasting. So let's make it a rule. <laughs> but I think that's sort of that's what's fun about this, right? Is that in in WandaVision, when she becomes the Scarlet Witch, we're not really deep into witchcraft. But now what Jack, Sha- what, what they're doing with their crew is they're setting up the rules right. for Marvel's witches. Oh, sorcery. I needed it. I yeah. needed the supernatural. I needed more of it. And so I feel like everybody really needs to pay attention to this, especially if there's going to be more magic and witches in the rest of the MCU, because you need to know these rules. It is interesting because like we've gotten Doctor Strange. We've got two Doctor Strange movies already. And I feel like we don't have like, this is like traditional witchcraft. It feels like, like this is like, you need I have a new, yeah, like double, double toil and exactly, trouble, yeah. which is fun. So it's going to be interesting to see like how far this power goes and exactly what is like the purple magic, what is green magic, what is all of this stuff? Um, Why does Jennifer Kale not have powers anymore? Why can she still do potions? Like, yeah, so it's right. It's there's a lot of questions and a lot of mystery. And I feel like we have to pace ourselves a little bit with like, oh, it could be this. And then it's going to get answered in the next. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Well, we're not falling (laughs) into the traps that we used to fall into in 2020, 2021. Exactly what I'm saying. Okay. I mean, wait. Oh, I am going to bring up Mephisto at some point during this, but with good reason. We just said we weren't. Actually, I'll do it now because you did mention the thing that I was going to mention with Mephisto. What did I mention? (laughs) Okay. So (laughs) since we're talking about who is Rio, she did say the black heart thing. Yeah. There is a character in Marvel comics. I don't know if it's going to be this easy because they like to mess with you, especially this team of people. But black heart is like the son of Mephisto. <laughs> so in this, it she could, could be, be the daughter, the daughter of Mephisto. I don't think that's what it is. Mm. I honestly don't. I think that she's more like Morgan Le Fay, who is like this big, powerful figure. You know, Morgan Le Fay. Right. Sounds familiar. We, it was some old stuff that we, we, we have talked about it. Um, so I'm not going to talk much about that in case she is, cause I don't want to give anything away. Okay. That's fair. That's you know, fair. but that is something that's where I'm leaning mm-hmm. with Rio because I know Aubrey Plaza has said through press and stuff, there's more to her than meets the eye. <laughs> so she's a transformer. She transformers one just came out today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Surprise. There's a, there's yeah. a transformer named Rio in that. And it's voiced by Aubrey Plaza. But those are my two like main theories at the moment. Okay. I have a question though. So as a hardcore comic fan that you are, I am always curious. In, let's say it's, she's not black heart. Right. Let's say she's a new character. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about new characters being introduced in the MCU? I think it's fine. Yeah. I, it doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? I, I think that there's characters where, you know, like Jennifer Kale is a character in the comics Mm. and 
I don't care what they do with that character only because like she is a sort of minor character. And the fact that any character that's getting attached to a name in a big TV show like this is really cool Mm -hmm. because I do feel like it gives the opportunity for those characters in the comics that have been forgotten or haven't been written in how long to, I don't know, maybe come back in some way. Like Agatha Harkness, because of WandaVision, she's de-aged a little bit. She's like sexy Agatha now. And she had a whole like big, like Marvel comic spanning run with the, um, crap what was it It was like chaos conquest i think it was called so it it like involved the avengers and everything like that so like i like it i like Mm. it when like characters are introduced that are new that maybe might mix some characters together which i feel like they've done in the past right um i just don't want any ralph boner situations Mm. where it's like to us it was a fun easter egg because it's like that is quicksilver in the fox universe but like for the show purposes it went nowhere it could have been anyone right and it was a boner joke so it was was like "Mm." Weird. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm hoping that like, I, I don't think they're going to do that again. I don't think Rio is going to be like red herring. I do think teen is going to be interesting. I think that let's get into teen. Oh God. Oh, another theory corner. I want to say just <laughs> first off, let's talk about Joe Locke. Well, that's what I was yeah, going to say. Right, 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 right. Joe Locke's American accent is fantastic. It's not bad. Yeah. And I don't want to say anything against Heartstopper because we all know I'm a diehard. Heartstopper fan. Which we will be covering on the podcast. We sure will. Season three. Uh, But he feels like a more mature actor in this. I feel he's more believable in this role. And I don't know if it's because just the level of writing between the two. Well, I think in one, he is playing a a kid. Mm. And in this one, he's playing in a more mature show. Yeah. A teenager. I I did see an interview with him where he said something along the lines of, it was really fun getting to dig into something with a little more depth. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like you could really see that. Like, I just am loving him. I I feel like he's doing, whoever teen is, he's doing a great job bringing them to life. I'm really liking it. I love the dynamic between Agatha and teen. I think it's so much fun. I, I just, I'm loving every single bit of it. I'm just like more of it. It could just be these two in this entire show. And I'd be happy. The bonus is we get Patty Lapone and Aubrey Plaza and everybody else. So it's like, yes, Um, I like teen. I I'm very interested because I'm one of the gays. I'm one of the people on the side of, if this is Billy Kaplan, if this is Wiccan, I'm fine with it. Like I, I don't really fully understand why people are against it. Joe Locke being Wiccan I think I've heard like it's like easy like obviously he would be Wiccan which I think is like not a bad thing right but you know if you have like reasons I'd love to know like I'm all ears um but I believe he would do a good job Mm -hmm. now I do think he could be another character which I think would play a big part in Scarlet Witch coming back via whatever but also just a interesting character outside of Wiccan um in the comics, like I was talking about, um, more recently, there is a character that Agatha makes, which is like a human boy form of the Darkhold. Mm. That's who I think, if it's not Wiccan, I could see teen being, because the Darkhold's also gone. Gone, yeah. It got smooshed with, uh, with Wanda, I believe, right? That was the, that's what happened at the end of Multiverse of Madness. If I'm wrong, please correct me, but I think that the Darkhold's missing or gone, and so is Wanda. And then Teen shows up. I don't know. Like, magically could have just appeared in people's lives. We don't have to believe him. He could have a boyf, but boyf. is it real? Who's boyf? Right. Yeah. Is it all real, or is he just making it up? He lives in Eastview. That's convenient. Yeah. <laughs> so I have not really theories, but I have some guesses. Yeah. That are out of completely out of left field that probably will hold no validity. My major thing that I'm like, duh, is that he is Nicholas Scratch. Mm, interesting. He's the son she forgot about. And now he's back trying to get her out of this. And like somehow his memory and stuff was wiped. Or all along, which kind of goes along with my second theory, is that actually he's evil. And so he's trying to get Agatha to go down the road for his own real evil purposes. I mean, yeah, I guess he right, showed up and then Rio showed up. Yeah. So, Because also, I, in my light research, like Nicholas Scratch, although he is her son, 
He's been an adversary of Agatha as well, right? And he's actually, like you said, the father of the Salem Seven. Right. So it feels like if we're going down this road of introducing Nicholas Scratch, he could possibly be an evil version of him or something like that. Some would say a witch's road. <laughs> down this road, witch's road. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I actually, that's not a bad idea. Like, so what you're saying is <laughs> Rio and Agatha played with forbidden magic, made a magical baby named Nicholas Scratch. And then all this stuff happened, and now their baby is back, and it's going to be a fight between the moms. <laughs> Which baby? <laughs> yeah. Which I actually, baby? that's not a bad. It it could be, or if we're going with the Nicholas Scratch theory, what if his father is Nicholas Scratch? Mm. We don't know who his parents are. Grandma. <laughs> Agatha is his grandma. Yeah. It, it, because okay, so let's go into the part of like his curse, right, or. Mm. The thing that's censoring him. Is it right? Is it that she can't hear it or he can't say it? Well, this is the thing. This is what I'm curious about. Because when she sees the scribble on his lips, which is also in the promotional materials, like the ones where it was, I don't, like the tarot cards, I believe, that symbol is on the sides of Mm. them. Um, So any important signifier or identifier of him, he can't say to her. And I'm saying to her... Because anytime he has tried to say anything around the other witches in the coven, she like puts him off. She's like, yeah, she's like, oh, he's this thing. Like she kind of stops. She literally covers his mouth sometimes. Right. And I think because when she first sees that symbol, she recognizes it. I think she recognizes the witch or whoever put it on him or her in general um, and doesn't want them to see. So it's very interesting. So is there somebody else? at play Hmm. or is that rio i think it's the only time we'll tell it it's safe to say (laughs) that we don't know (laughs) but i want to (laughs) know guys we're back into like weekly theorizing and just like having fun with us we're in our happy place yeah (laughs) we're in a happy place we're gonna just make guesses that don't make any sense because we can (laughs) do you have any like thoughts on the curse i'm just calling it a curse i don't know what else to call it hex the the curse on him yeah well i think that So I think that the curse is there or whatever it is. So she doesn't know who he truly is. Right. So maybe he's whoever, but Rio has cursed him. (laughs) Right. Because (laughs) she just, it's just like he is teen him. (laughs) Well, because I also thought it was interesting that teen was in that closet. Granted, he had some tape on him. That's fine. But there's like this giant brawl happening right outside the closet and he doesn't come out and try to help in any way or intervene in any way. Well, he was tied up. Uh, he ends up standing up and sitting on the couch at some point. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was just kidnapped by a out of her mind Agatha. She like, just came out of the hex and she kidnapped him. <laughs> I'm just saying that if we think that they're fishy. working together, right. it makes sense that he wouldn't intervene in the fight at all. Right. Right. It is true. I think that we... I'm going to be trying to pay close attention to seeing how people are interacting with each other Mm. and what they are and aren't saying to each other, because it is going to seem like people aren't going to give full information. Because one of the really cool things that I liked seeing in this is when she's going around and finding her coven, right? Each witch that joins the coven has a reason to go on the road in some form or fashion. Um, So it's going to be interesting to see like who betrays doesn't betray helps or whatever who Mm. um because you know we have jennifer kale she doesn't have magic anymore she really would love to have magic again she could do that on witch's road right we have patty lapone's character she is living not great and she used to be like the person in the villages or the towns that they would go to driven out because of that right and then we have um alice her mother disappeared on the witch's road do you think that her mother was part of Agatha's coven that never came back from the witch's road? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. They just don't know. Right. And that's the thing. And you have to wonder, though, does Agatha know? Because I think at this point in time, right, no one is willing to work with Agatha freely because of how awful she is. So she had to find witches that desperately needed to go down the witch's road. It was really interesting. If you think about like how they interacted with her, it wasn't that they were scared of her. Right. Which I thought Mm -hmm. was interesting. They were more like, you have a bad reputation. It's just not worth it. 
like, you know what I like, you are the reason why like covens are the way they are mm-hmm. or whatever. So it's, it's an interesting like precedent that she set because she's so old and she's been like, she is the legend. She is the myth. Old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just kind of like, mm, no, but then they get convinced to go. Right. And I am curious, like, did she actually think that they could open it? Because it did seem like she was trying to egg them on when the Salem Seven was coming to like shoot her with the powers to absorb them. Yeah, I think at the I think we always have to remember that with Agatha at the bottom of it all, Agatha is only looking out for one person Agatha, and it's Agatha. So I think in any situation, she's got a plan A, B and C. Mm. And so in that situation, you know, maybe she really didn't think they were going to open it. She's like, OK, well, if we do, cool, we'll, well deal she, with that. She got Mrs. Davis. Who isn't a witch so far we know. Because she didn't want to get Rio. Right. But but to open the witch's road, you need a coven. So it's like you got a witch that She'll you take knew, anyone. That you knew wasn't a witch. So you would think that it wouldn't actually work. Mm, but very then good it, point. But then it did work. So interesting. Yeah. Mm, that, I think she didn't think it was going to work. And then it worked. And she's like, oh, well, okay. Well, maybe everyone that lived in Westview because they were under Wanda's control for so long has a little bit of magic in them. You know what I think? Tell me. I think it's like a Ned situation. Ned from Spider-Man, where he was able to use the sling ring. I think that she might be magical in some way. She just doesn't know it. Mm-hmm. That's what I hope for Mrs. Davis. She might truly be you know, a tarot witch, a green witch. Look, at her garden was gorgeous. Oh, I don't know. And that. apparently, you know, want, um, Agatha thought she was taking pictures of her Jane Doe, but in reality, it was probably just Mrs. Davis's garden. Oh my God. <laughs> and I love teens like, those are just flowers. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> they were, yeah. It wasn't a body. <laughs> also, one other thing as far as queer representation in this, I love uh, teen really being a delightful host and putting up a banner and serving old granola bars. I like how you're like, that's queer. <laughs> Mama, <laughs> I am a great host. Okay. okay. Am I not? Yeah. You've but... seen my charcuterie. <laughs> but like, I just like how you're equating good host to queer. <laughs> I so sure am. put a banner up, you're probably gay. He made that. <laughs> he did make that. Okay. Which like magic. Crafty. And then she ripped it apart. Yeah. Rude. <laughs> I just love, so speaking of uh, Mrs. Davis, I loved that that scene one the the ballad of the witch's road fantastic mm-hmm. everybody can sing i'm glad you got patty lapone to sing you have to Catherine Hahn, fantastic everybody's fantastic but i love that they it seemed like a little bit of an homage to that 70s show mm-hmm. because they're all in the basement and the camera doesn't necessarily turn like it did in that 70s show but it goes to each one like it jump cuts to them yeah um it it just felt like that's what was happening um, so I, I really liked that, but I loved that she was just happy to be there and happy to be included. Well, she the, was just swinging hands. Yeah. She was just following along. She's <laughs> yeah. like, I guess I can get the down, down, down part at the end, but it's kind of sad, right? Because her husband passed away. We learned. <gasps> oh. And so she's like, okay, I'll go to a party. She's like, yeah, I'll go in your basement. Okay. I'll sing this song. What if I was just, I just remembered that she showed up in the episode earlier when she ran over teen. <laughs> yeah. Which, Jesus, that wasn't in like a fake thing. That was in real life. She ran over teen. But I'm curious if she thought that Agatha was like going to come after her because of that. But then she just invited to her party. Yeah. And she's like, yes, please. I'll do anything. Please don't kill me. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. She's like, are we supposed to know the song? <laughs> yeah, I know. It was so cute. And then even once they, you know, the, the Salem Seven's coming and they go down into the whole hole. I the guess. The Witch's Road. The Witch's Road down the stairs um she like just watches them take her shoes their shoes off she's like okay oh, she's so I'll, sweet. I'll take my shoes off too. nothing better happened to her i swear i know what did you think about the salem seven? Oh my gosh so scary oh so scary fantastic they were so creepy and you know what's like funny is that like if you look at the comic representation of the salem seven especially like one of the original ones they were like a group of mutants kind of yeah i feel like they're the same but not like the costumes aren't crazy. No, you know? <laughs> but but this is this feels like a very like sleek, updated version witches. of creepy witches. Right. Yeah. Like especially with like the lace over their faces, so you can't really see Did them. Did you notice that the lace on their faces resembled an animal, a different animal? Oh, I didn't. Yeah, there no. were some with like different ears and like different stuff because we we saw the animals throughout it right and each one of the salem seven like represents some type of animal yeah what did we see we saw a crow a wolf a mouse i would say rat 
a rat because it was not cute. No, there That's were a it. couple other. Was it just those three? Just those three. Yeah. So yep. that was that was very cool. So Agatha knew they were coming. Yeah, of course she did. She felt it. She knew it was she knew it was going to happen. Yeah. She was hoping that she could get juiced up to fight them in some way, but they ended up going down the witch's road. Anyway. Yeah. And I'm really curious because it didn't happen right away. Like the door opening cuz Agatha even says like this it should have happened by now. And I don't know if she was like playing that up and she knew it was going to wasn't going to happen, but as soon as Teen came down the stairs, it opened mm-hmm. and it happened. So I'm either curious if it's because of Teen's presence or because of the Salem Seven, because they started coming down the stairs as well. And they just needed that like extra. That magical force. Right. The extra little bit of magic. Yeah. Interesting. So we got our divination witch. We got our potions witch. Our green witch, maybe. Mm-hmm. I mean, Rio's going to show back up. Obviously, we know that. We got sweet Mrs. Davis and we got protector mm-hmm. witch and then Agatha. <laughs> And teen. <laughs> Who is the witch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm so excited. We got a little tiny glimpse of the witch's road. Um, so much more is going to be happening in this. I can't wait. I think the next episode might be like 70s-ish. Ooh. If I'm not mistaken. I will say be very careful out there with like stuff that's been released from production and casting. Mm. Because there are some names that I have seen. I'm like, cool. Didn't want to know that that was oh, coming. no. So just be very careful out there. Okay. Um, there's also a mild, mild spoiler with like the Salem 7's like stuff. So again, <laughs> be very careful. For lack of a better term. Right. Stuff. We won't be saying that kind of thing. Like when, if I see something that is like, oh shit, I won't say it. Like an actual right. plot spoiler. If I'm theorizing and it happens to be true, yay me. Kudos to <laughs> us. A plus. <laughs> yeah, but so... That's Agatha all along. I think it's a great start. Um, I'm more excited to see what's to come. I think it did a great job of setting it up. I need more. I need more Abu Plaza, like, immediately. And I'm really interested to see what shape the rest of the series takes, right? So in episode two out of nine, we're already on the witch's road. So how many more episodes? Is it going to be one episode for each of them going Mm. forward in each of their trials? I think so, right? Yeah. It would it would almost have to be because what we have Agatha Teen, Rio, um Alice, Alice, Jennifer, and Lilia. And Lilia. So six. And we're on episode two. So two. that's eight. And then one is the last one. Right. It could be each one kind of gets their own little trial. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Mm, interesting. Oh, last thing. One last thing. Could have saved this for the next one, but whatever. Um it was kind of nice to see everybody, how they reacted to the Scarlet Witch outside of everything. Because it was one thing to see them in the square in WandaVision with all of them being like, let us go or Stop. like, let us die. Um, but seeing like the graffiti on the plot and everybody being like, boo, thank you for, you know, doing this. It was kind of nice to see like, oh, okay, it's not like just brushed over or glanced Oh, over. absolutely. That would have been really a disservice to the series. I yeah. mean, because even Dottie was just like, yeah, we you hate you, too, Agatha. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, imagine you, so not, so you were, you know, for how long you were trapped by, by Wanda, but now you have to deal with the byproduct of that fight. The wild neighbor who's always in a different world, driving her weird car the fa- in her living in room. In her living room. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And also, like, the fact that they agreed to do that. You know what I mean? I do feel like the male guy was kind of, like, over it because he was like, there's a fire. Good luck. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He just, like, left. Out of there. (laughs) Um, But I I think it's, like, it says something to them of just, okay, I guess we have to deal with this. Right, because the alternative might be being controlled again or death, so we'll just deal with it. Or death. At least they have autonomy now. (laughs) Yeah, that's great. And go on their little lives and enjoy it. (laughs) Besides Agatha, you know. All right. I think that wraps it up for episode one and two of Agatha All Along, triple A, if you will. Um, yeah, let us know what you thought. Comment below, Discord, and we'll see you next week on The Witch's Road, <gasps> episode three. Ooh. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.